What's going on everybody? Welcome back to The Schmidt Show, a place where we talk about sports, culture, and everything in between. I'm your host and creator, Ethan Schmidt. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued support. It is greatly appreciated. Please like, share, subscribe. It goes a long way. Feel free to leave your comments, your takes, We'll see if they're hot or cold. You can also support by following me on Twitter at the Ethan Schmidt and check out my new and improved portfolio website, ethanschmidt.myportfolio.com. It's complete with all of my best and latest work. I'll be sure to leave the link in the description box below. On this week's edition of The Schmidt Show, we have a new guest joining us. The NBA postseason is here and will be nothing short of amazing. MLB opening week was stellar. The 2022 NFL Draft is right around the corner, just two weeks away. So much going on in the world of sports. Let's get after it. It's that time of year again. The NBA playoffs are here and the play-in tournament began on Tuesday. The Brooklyn Nets securing the seventh seed with a 115 to 108 win over the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Nets will now take on the Boston Celtics in the first round right away. Two heavyweights going at it in the East and it is going to be a gauntlet in the Eastern Conference, that's for sure. The Minnesota Timberwolves stormed back from down 10 with nine minutes left to beat the Los Angeles Clippers 109 to 104. Guess who? Patrick Beverly sealed it with a big steal to beat his old team and absolutely losing his mind running around the court going buck wild. The T Wolves securing the seventh seed and will now take on the Memphis Grizzlies in the first round, and that will be an exciting matchup in its own right. Ice Trey and the Atlanta Hawks destroying the Charlotte Hornets on Wednesday night and will now head to Cleveland to take on the Cavaliers on Friday for the eighth seed in the East. New Orleans represent the Pelicans with a great win over the San Antonio Spurs on Wednesday night as well. Now the Pelicans will head to LA to take on the Clippers for the final eighth seed spot in the west both of these games taking place on friday evening now regardless of friday's outcomes i still think that the number one seeds of course the league best phoenix suns and the number one seed in the east the miami heat will roll and cruise to easy first round victories on this week's edition of the schmidt show we have another guest the lone wolf the scrappy dog the one and only Austin Hari grad. Welcome to the show. How you doing, sir? Doing good. It's a beautiful day here in Arizona. A lot of wind and it's not too hot just yet. So right before summer, trying to make it last as long as it could here before it starts hitting those triple digits. So NBC Sports social media coordinator, you have been working with golf, NBA, NFL, pretty much anything in the sports realm. Just how's it been uh, with this job and and where is this role taking you to this point? Yeah, bro. I mean, it's crazy. It's actually almost a full year since I've been working at NBC. It'll be a full year on May 1st. So it's pretty nuts how quickly that has flown by. Yeah, um, it's been real. insane. You know, like you mentioned, I've been able to work in damn near everything you could think of from NFL to the Olympics. Golf now has been a main thing. I've been working a lot. Obviously, betting and fantasy stuff is also and my forte as well. So it's been a lot of fun being able to do all that be a part of all that. And of course, you know, talking about NBA and a lot of betting stuff with that too is a lot of fun too. I've even dipped my toes into things like NASCAR, something I never <laughs> thought I'd even be able to dip my toes into. You know, I'm dipping them in there. I wish I could drive a NASCAR, but can't do that yet. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun, you know, working the Olympics was one hell of a grind. You know, 21 straight 12 hour shifts, working until 3 a.m. is no freaking joke. It's but, insane, you know, man. Yeah, it's, it was crazy, but, you know, we got it through. We're back home now. You know, working remote has been – has its ups and downs. It's great that I kind of set my own schedule and I could kind of roll out of bed and start working. But, you know, it was also fun to be able to check out the HQ, too, while I could. And uh, also see some snow, which was fun, too. But it's been awesome being able to work for NBC, you know, as a 22-year-old kid, basically fresh out of college in a pandemic. So 
you know, it's something that I never thought I'd get to, but it's been awesome to be able to create content for them and hoping to continue to do that. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I mean, the Winter Olympics uh, was a spectacle um, back earlier th at the beginning of the year. And so cool you got to do that, uh, followed some of your work. And uh, I have to ask you, what's it like having all that power at your hands, you know, running all those social accounts? It's got to it's be an interesting feeling. You know, it's crazy, dude. I mean, I have the amount of accounts I have on my phone because I'm a social media worker and I like to work from my phone. So I send all the graphics and stuff to myself and post via my cellular device. You know, why not? Everyone's mm -hmm. on their phone 24 seven. Let's do it. And I can work from damn near wherever the hell I want if I'm on my phone. But I mean, it's crazy. I'm I'm able to control accounts. I have million plus followers across Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. So that's something that's been really big for us. And, you know, it's pretty cool yeah, that I'm definitely. logging all these accounts and hell on Instagram. I have to log out of accounts because I'm logged into too many. So I um, mean, it's pretty humbling that I'm able to have all that power. And, you know, since I'm out West and NBC's out East, a lot of the times at nights, I'm the only one on. So it's like, I'm the only one on these accounts. <laughs> posting. Like, it's a little scary of a 23 year old, you know, wolf. That's kind of a crackhead vibe, but you know, uh, you know, I like to get my work done. I'm very professional when I need to be. So um, everything's been good. I haven't been in trouble yet. So let's hope that doesn't happen anytime soon. Well, you are leading uh, the golf channel, uh, social media, and of course the 86 mass, which just wrapped up the Scotty Scheffler taking it all uh, uh, 10 under in the tournament. Um, where, what were your thoughts on Scheffler's performance? Oh, God, Scotty. So he has zero PGA Tour wins up until this year. You know, the first tournament he actually won was none other than the one here, the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Yep. So, you know, it's yep. pretty crazy to think now he's won four tournaments, including the Masters. He has a green jacket. He's a number one player in the world. He passed John Rahm a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, former Sun Devil John Rahm, he has not had a great start to 2022 for him. But Scotty Shuffler yeah. is awesome. You know, 25-year-old kid from Texas, uh, standout guy. Everyone likes him, and it's hard not to root for someone like that. So he had a hell of a performance at the Masters. And, you know, the Masters was one of the most watched golf tournaments in a while. Now having Tiger Woods back kind of helped that, of course. But, you mm -hmm. know, people were there to watch good golf, and that's what Scotty Scheffler showed. And it was a great performance by him. And I know you won some money off that, too. So congrats on that. Sprinkle yeah, a little, there's a some darts on there. A little, a little sprinkle action. Yeah, yeah sprinkle uh, on there, yeah. There's some darts. Uh, Scheffler at plus 1,800 uh, at the beginning of the tournament and um, turned a very small amount and to uh, some good amount of change. So, hey, let's uh, hope it keeps it rolling keep the money coming in. I know um, you change. mentioned Tiger's return, and everybody was just into that. I mean, he hadn't played professional golf in 509 days. Um, him coming back uh, started off pretty strong, but did fall off near the end of the tournament. Um, what did you see in Tiger's return? I saw someone that has not played a full four days of golf on a tough course to walk struggle in the second half of the tournament, obviously, you know, his endurance is not there yet. You don't blame him. Mm -hmm. He just got in a car crash just over a year ago that could have, ended his life and thank yeah, you thank you walked scary. out okay yeah very scary and you know his main goal is to make the cut it was his 22nd consecutive cut made at the masters which is unreal believe it or not that's not a record but it is unreal mm -hmm. nonetheless and mm -hmm. you know he had a great first couple of rounds of golf obviously fatigue did settle in over the weekend but it was just great to see tiger and red again on a sunday and it was a lot of fun being able to cover that and be able to make a lot of posts, you know, talking about Tiger. And he had a lot of great quotes over the weekend um, from the Masters, just being grateful that he's able to get back to playing, especially on such a big event that he's been, you know, a staple and one of the best ever at winning those green jackets. Truly. And it was, it was just astonishing this, the stature of this guy and how everybody was following him so closely and rooting him on and just a transcendent athlete in sport in all of sports uh, let alone golf but you know what time it is the nba playing tournament is here just a uh, overall picture of the playing tournament and where do you see it shaking out to finalize the official 2022 postseason 
Well, to start, if I'm the Celtics, I'm very unhappy with where I finished in the Eastern Conference. You're going to have to play Brooklyn, okay? You're playing Brooklyn in the first round. They're a team that easily could have been a one or two seed. Obviously, we know what happened with Kyrie with all those issues with being not vaccinated and not able to play. He's allowed to sit on the bench, but wasn't allowed to play in the game. Yeah. Which, that makes a lot and of the sense. Whole Nonetheless, debacle, of course. Yeah, and then obviously James Harden getting traded and all that good stuff and KD being injured and Steve Nash, a fresh new coach in there, obviously you rally the Valley there, a former son. But, you know, at the end of the day, the Nets are going to get out of the plane, of course. But, you know, even if the Cavs don't make it to the next round, which I think if the Hawks beat the Hornets, I think the Hawks will beat the Cavs again with the injuries. Evan Moby just came back. Um, but at the end of the day, the Cavs are a team I'm going to be scared of as a Bulls fan, too, in the Central for years going forward. They have Darius Garland, Karis LeVert, Evan Mobley, Jarrett Allen. I mean, the list goes on. Isaac Okoro from that Auburn. Franchise is just getting started. Yeah, and of course, Colin Sexton was out for the year at the start Dallas. of the year, and he's probably their best player. You know, so you have this all nah. this young talent, all under the age of what, like 25? And they're going to be great. They have, And then they have the veterans and like Kevin Love to help out. Rajon Rondo has been on that bench. So don't be discouraged, Cavs fans, by this year that has been derailed by injuries. And, you know, you guys are just starting fresh up. Uh, but unfortunately, I think if the Hawks are able to beat LaMelo and the Hornets, that the Hawks will be that eight seed um, when the Cavs lose today. And, you know, you and I were just talking about it to the Western Conference. You like the Clippers. I like the T-Wolves and uh, to win tonight, at least. And at the end of the day, you look at that T-Wolves lineup. Hell, I was so wrong about Anthony Edwards. I'm so sorry, Anthony, because you have I was too. I, I'm not going to lie. I saw him play when Georgia came to ASU in 2019. And... He only had like 10 points and just wasn't for somebody that was so hyped to not be a factor in the game in, in Arizona State beating Georgia. It was just like it, this guy's supposed to be a number one overall pick. He didn't. I guess he just decided not to flash it for us in Tempe, but he has erupted and Minnesota's got a great one. Yeah, he's been awesome. And I think Minnesota, they're going to give Memphis some tough you know, stretches there the 7-2 seed, which usually is pretty straightforward. The two and one seeds usually win. But this Minnesota team has a lot of star power. Obviously, Cat, they have D'Lo at the point guard. They have that tough little bastard and have Patrick Beverly that likes to do everything he can. Um, he's a man. Being scrappy. And, you know, he's one of the <laughs> least liked players in the league, which means I like him a lot. Scrappy a scrappy player. But, yeah, I mean, it's going to, you know, to me, I think the play-in honestly shouldn't be a thing because you have a team like the Spurs who are 18 games under 500, bro. Okay, yeah. I don't know about exactly yeah. 118, but holy crap, they it's should not have a chance to make the freaking playoffs, okay? And I understand I, I the NBA wants there. Yeah, I mean, the NBA wants to have your team in it as long as possible. That makes them more money, gives everyone more hope. Okay, I don't want to hear no freaking hope. I love DeJounte Murray when he's your best player and who's number two? Who's the second best player on the Spurs? Lonnie Walker, Jacob Pottle, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, how are they even in a chance to make the play? -in? Okay. And I think, you know, the playoff seating will be set where the Nets will be the seven in the East, Hawks will be the eight in the East, and then the seven, eight in the West will be the T Wolves and the Clippers, just as it is right now, um, which will have us set up for an exciting NBA playoffs with a lot of star power. Definitely. And with that being said, uh, just do you see any first round upsets happening in the postseason, or uh, do you think that it's going to be the favorites at least moving on to the second round? Yeah, I mean, upset wise, I definitely think, unfortunately for the Celtics, they're without Robert Williams. You have KD and Kyrie saying. coming into your backyard, and it's going to be tough. And unfortunately, the upset, which I don't think it'll be upset by the books, because I'm pretty sure the Nets will end up being favored. Sorry, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's um, so strange upset. how that worked out, honestly. Very I mean, strange, and that's that's the beauty, though, of the NBA with all these injuries and now how players miss games, and of course with Kyrie's issues that we, you know, we've talked about obviously in the past. Mm -hmm. But I think that's going to be the major upset. Um, I don't really see there being any other big upsets other than, I guess, the Jazz, I believe, are the five seed against the four Mavericks. And now with Doncic having his calf strain injury, I think the Jazz were going to win the series anyways. They've just been there more. And unfortunately, it's Doncic against the world. And I know our buddy loves his Luka Doncic, but I just think his magic is not going to get past the first round this year. And, you know, at the end of the day, 
this half chain is brutal. It's such a horrible time for Doncic to be struggling with an injury. Why was he playing? Some people are wondering. Questionable. I don't know, Jason Kidd. He used to be a member at Ganey Village Health Club and Spa where we used to work. And I've met him a few times. Seems like a nice guy, but doesn't well, seem like the smartest decision. Mentioning uh, Doncic being played in that game and obviously uh, straining his calf. When you look back, though, in time, these players used to play almost every game of the season. I mean, I think Michael Jordan, all but two seasons, he played at least 78 games. And, you know, the rest management, the load management, such an interesting uh, outlook on the way the NBA is played in today's game. But just a tough blow for the Mavs rolling into the postseason. So we can agree on Miami moving on. Uh, the Bucks, the Bucks are gonna take down your Bulls with ease. I believe you're thinking. Yeah, they're gonna kill them. Unfortunately, I'm <laughs> fan. they played four times this year. Every single game, they've been killed. Okay, the I'm, I'm putting a lot kid. of money on the Bucks. The Bucks are right now to win the series um, on points bet. Shout out points bet from NBC um, to win the series right now. The Bucks are minus 900, which is pretty fucking insane. Pardon my French for a three-six oh matchup. It's usually never that low. Yeah. Um, and I'm still putting money. Weep, are you bringing the brooms out already? Your bulls are I, getting sweat. The brooms scare me because I think the bulls might get one maybe in game four just to avoid the full sweep. I think it's going to be a gentleman's sweep eight. where they're going to. Yeah, they'll win at home in Fizzer Forum in Milwaukee. Uh, but speaking of Milwaukee, the former defending champs, there's only one team ahead of them right now in regards to odds of who to win the NBA championship. And we know who that is. That's Rally the Valley, our Phoenix Suns here. They're currently plus 275 on points one, right dude. now. Um, and unfortunately, it's not a great number, but it's just going to get lower and lower. So if you think the Suns are going to win, now's the time to bet it because as more teams get eliminated, those odds are just going to get worse and worse for the better and better, yeah, obviously. For it, uh, plus 270. What'd you say you got it at? Points bet right now is at a plus 275. And, you know, uh, me and one of my buddies actually talked about it. Points bets odds are way better than most of the rest of the sports books. It's pretty crazy how mm -hmm. some of their odds are like, are you sure that's not a typo? Because it's like, those odds should not be that good. So if you're looking for a new, you know, sports book points bet is mostly located in the Northeast right now. Uh, but, you know, if you're in the Northeast or going to be moving there soon, uh, I'd recommend looking into points bet because they have some great odds. Not I personally use FanDuel out here in the West, but, you know, at the end of the day, points bet does have good, some good stuff. Um, but, you know, like you mentioned. Matchup? So are you you're rolling with Suns Bucks then? I'm going to have a little surprise. I think I'm going to do Sixer Suns. Sixer Suns is my. Son. Yes. Wow. I think they're going to have to finally do something, bro. And I'm not a big fan of Doc Rivers, but I think Embiid's a freaking beast. I think Harden, it's his time, and he needs to get something done. I think they have a favorable matchup in the second round, getting to play the Heat rather than the Nets or the Bucks. Um, no offense mm -hmm. to the Heat, but Jimmy Butler, and I love JB, Marquette guy, but his lack of offensive firepower is something that's really going to stunt the Heat. And as we know, in the playoffs, it comes down to star power. And they have the star power, the Sixers do. It's gonna, I think it's going to be Sixers, Suns. I think the only team that could really give the Suns some fits are the Warriors. I love the Grizzlies and I love their team, but they're just too young, just starting out. And I think the playoffs is going to be tough for them to get as many easy buckets as they've been getting in the regular season. Uh, but yeah, I think the Sixers, if they're going to get it, this is going to be the year. And I think they're going to be helped with getting the heat in the second round. And then in that, you know, conference finals matchup, I think it's going to be the Nets against the Sixers. And I think at the end of the day, Joel Embiid is going to go off. You like Andre Drummond guarding him? I don't. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, I mean. Drummond and walking double-double. Right. But at the end of the day, like I mean, a walking triple-triple. <laughs> Go to in and out animal-style fries. Yeah, triple animal style double, fries anyway. on top of those double-doubles out here. West. But yeah, dude, it's, when you, you bring know, up Embiid, or go ahead. Oh, it's going to be the fun playoffs nonetheless. I think. Oh, it's going to be fiery, very fierce and competitive. Uh, it doesn't get any better than the NBA postseason. We talk about Joel Embiid, and is he snubbed already from the NBA MVP? Oh, Seeing so reports that Jokic already got most of the votes. He's basic. Jokic just wrapped it up, okay? I've never been a Jokic fan. I think he complains all the time. I think he's sloppy. I think 
the way he plays is gross, okay? And I've never been a Jokic fan, but at the end of the day, he's a baller, okay? I can't deny that. He's a baller. He's from the he, mob, so he's tough. He drags okay? the Nuggets with that, especially and without the The Nuggets running. roster is so bad, okay? Their second <laughs> best player, no disrespect to Iowa State's Monte Morris. He's our second best player, okay? Stop Will it. Barton? Stop Will it. Barton? And that's why he's going to be the MVP, okay? Will Barton yeah. get out of here? He's not bad. He's a fourth player on a championship team, maybe. Okay? Yeah. And, you yeah, know, no, at the end of Overrated anyways, he never plays, but when he does play, he's overrated. All he does is stand in the corner, shoot threes. I mean, they're missing Jamal Murray, okay? Yes, Jamal yeah. Murray went off in the bubble playoffs. Do I think he's that good? No. But he's obviously their second best player when healthy. And when you don't have your second best player, your point guard. Now, Jokic basically plays the point, the shooting guard, and the center position for the Nuggets all at once. <laughs> then you have Martin and Aaron Gordon as the other two players. The whole starting so, lineup. Just um, like Jokic five times. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, I would personally give the MVP to Embiid just to switch it up a little bit. Because arguably, you could have given the MVP to LeBron. They both have a good years. case. I mean, even Giannis was right there, too. I mean, and y'all... I mean, the he thing still is, has Middleton and, and Holiday, obviously. Yeah, but people forget how... I mean, Giannis isn't the defensive player of the year running. And he, people forget how good he is. Like, they're like, oh, we expect him to average 30 and 14 shooting 50 yeah, when, when a guy's just expected it's almost like it devalues them in the race and i don't know why that is but yeah i mean I that's 100 like true and in Giannis's case though he's gonna say hell bro i mean i've increased my three point and free throw shooting this year i shoot over 70 percent now wow. from the line which is my big knock i shoot over 33 percent now from the three which was my huge knock and it's like what more do I got to do? I'm a defensive player of the year candidate. I average 30 and 15 a night um, and six assists too. But I mean, at the end of the day, you can't go wrong with giving it to Jokic. And I hate to say that, but I mean, you can't go wrong giving it to either of those three guys because they've all had a standing season in this NBA where, you know, a lot of players don't play, but these three have showed up damn near every night. They get on the court, they play, and uh, they give their team all they got. So um, I feel like Jokic is going to win. I personally would give it to Embiid, but you can't go wrong with either three. Austin Grad, our guest here on The Schmidt Show. Moving on to some NFL talk. The NFL offseason has been electric in its own right. And, of course, the draft uh, just over two weeks away in Las Vegas, Sin City gonna be a fun show there and there's so much drama around this draft i feel like because nobody knows what's gonna happen yeah i mean this draft is one of the weird ones because the quarterback class is not great okay other than malik willis i don't think a quarterback should be taken in the first round because just wait next year and you'll have several big options because if you're already a terrible team like a lot of these teams that are picking the top 10 cough cough new york is um <laughs> At the end of the day, you're going to be bad next year too, okay? So what's the matter with you being bad again? I mean, my Bears are already going to – planning on tanking next year. They don't care, okay? And a lot of these teams know they're not in contention. So it's like, why waste your first-round pick this year on a quarterback that you're unsure of? Sure, Kenny Pickett had a good year. You could say Matt Corral solid, but he, has, he got injured in his last game of his collegiate career. I mean, at the end of the day, do you really like Desmond Ritter in the first round from Cincinnati? I don't. I think if you're going to take a quarterback, it has to be Malik Willis, but I would not take him inside the top 10. Again, he was a baller, but he also played at Liberty, which they didn't play the biggest schools. And, you know, he had a great combine. But again, Jamarcus Russell could, could have thrown the ball 80 yards. OK, <laughs> <laughs> he had a great combine. No one cares yeah, about when that. Going right? against air, it's real. It's easy to make it look easy. That's for sure. 100 percent. Now you have, you know. NFL sized corners and safeties that they close on that ball so damn quick. It's crazy the difference between college and NFL. And like in college football, as you know, we watch a lot of college football. Guys are open nonstop. You're like, how is this guy so goddamn wide open? Do they have nine guys on defense? <laughs> but then in the NFL, it's like, how come no one's damn open? Justin Fields is running around for his life back there because the receivers can't create any separation. But that's just the difference between the NFL and college football. And, you know, I think this year right. it's going to be a offensive line heavy draft with a lot of defensive linemen in there too and i think if you're a terrible team go draft one of the guys from the line of scrimmage and it'll instantly make your team better definitely well last week on the schmidt show we featured uh peter schrager's first mock draft and he actually has kenny pickett going 
off the board as the first quarterback to the Carolina Panthers at number six. I would think that would be a very horrible move by the Panthers, but we've seen them make terrible quarterback moves in recent years anyways. Yeah, well, again, if you're the Panthers, Tom Brady decided to ruin your chances of winning the division when he unretired this year, okay? <laughs> That's what happened. It's true. They're not no, winning well, the damn division. So why are you taking the quarterback? Already. <laughs> Hell, and I, you know, I was so wrong about Sam Darnold because I loved him coming out of USC. Unfortunately, he has not worked out. This is his second team where he still just does not look as good. Then maybe if CMC actually plays this year, again, keyword actually, because he's a Mike Trout of the NFL. Um, and if he actually plays it's this year, how, don't, hey, thank you. I mean, they're very similar. They both don't win anything and they're both always injured. So good for them. It's, it's um, superior when they're on the field, but when are they going to be on the field? <laughs> correct. And it hurts their team. I mean, again, as one of our buddies likes to say, Mike Trout has one career hit in the postseason. <laughs> this is less than so many players you can name off. I mean, David Ross has two hits in a game in the postseason. Mike Trout has one in his career, okay? So, like, <laughs> I mean, but, you know, in regards to the Panthers and Sam Darnold, you're not going to win it this year. You're not going to win shit this year. So you may as well not reach for a quarterback that is small hands, small in general. And, again, you know, yeah, I don't think – Yeah, definitely a reach, but – you know, uh, uh, this is out of your book. Who cares about Carolina? <laughs> That's <laughs> but, what I say uh, too. A I lot mean, of these teams. Malik change. Willis w- should be probably the best overall. If any quarterback is taken in the first round, Malik Willis out of Liberty. Yes, he played uh, inferior talent at Liberty, but just the most NFL ready um, body, uh, game style, and then. Um, Of course, Kenny Pickett, I mean, he pulled off a a good amount of highlight plays at Pittsburgh, led them to uh, ACC championship in his last season, but uh, still making some of the mistakes that you need to cut out when, if you're going to try to take over an NFL friend. Uh, Desmond Ritter could be a dark horse at quarterback. Uh, Peter Schrager had uh, Detroit taking him with the final pick Mm -hmm. in his mock draft, but Desmond Ritter, not exactly uh, the physical specimen like Malik Willis, but his cerebral uh, activity and the way that he reads defenses could possibly make him special. And then, of course, Sam Howell, uh, all the hand size. How big is your hand, bud? You measure your hand recently? <laughs> Sam, here's what I got to say about Ritter and Howell real quick. Ritter is a Go great college quarterback. Won't translate to the NFL, you don't think? That's all I have to say. He's a great college quarterback, which means, yes, he's not going to translate to the NFL. He's never going to make an NFL, in my opinion. And same with Sam Howell. As you could tell, he struggled in the ACC on Mm -hmm. North Carolina. Sam Howell is very similar to Mitch. Senior slump for Howell. Weird. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, I mean, his offensive line was terrible. But at the end, at, at the end of the day, he's basically going to be a worse version of Trubisky. At least he won't be take number two overall. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, he's the same type of quarterback from North Carolina. Has one good year and <laughs> won't end up working out in the, uh, you know, NFL. So. Well, then you have uh, a quarterback that you already mentioned, Matt Corral. But of course, coming off injury and. Uh, do you see him going in the first round possibly or not? I think if you're going to take a second quarterback other than Willis in the first round, he's the one to take a chance on um, because I think he does have a lot of talent. But at the end of the day, again, it's, it's tough to make the NFL. There's a reason why the same quarterback stayed in the league for 20 damn years like Brady, like Roethlisberger, like Rivers, like Breeze. Because guess what? Usually there's no one that's better. So why are you going to replace them? And that's why it's really tough in the NFL to get a good quarterback. And that's why I think too often teams reach for quarterbacks when they really Mm -hmm. don't need to reach. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, the, I guess not necessarily quarterback sweepstakes, but who's going to take the leap on uh, some of these top guys at this single calling position? Well, of course, the Chicago kid, uh, Austin Hari grad and, um, just looking at Chicago, I know um, your your Mr. GM stands for Grad Moves. And what what, what are you doing with the Bears in the draft and heading into uh, this upcoming season? Here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to stockpile as many picks as I can because the Bears are 
A-S-S. They're ass. They're terrible. <laughs> Whatever word you want to use that is bad. Look up synonyms of bad. You could throw it at the Bears because that's what they are, okay? They're going to be terrible this year. We all know it, okay? They're letting go of people left and right. They're trading everything. They have a new GM who's a former special teams player. I'm going to have to give him some time because Ryan Pace screwed everything up in Chicago. But they're expected to be a dumpster fire this year, and they know it. Um, so basically, this year, it's all about trying to make Justin Fields grow as a player. Um, and at this point with their second round pick, they needed help everywhere. Okay. If we're being frankly honest and yeah. except for running back and quarterback. And at the end of the day, if I'm the bears, they need a receiver badly. Um, but I would trade away the second, your second round pick and try to gain more draft capital capital. If you could, whether it be in this year's draft, next year's draft, nonetheless, they just need more draft capital because as you could tell, they have no picks in the first round for the next couple of years. Yeah, it's still going to be a rebuilding year, especially with yeah. uh, your young quarterback, Justin Fields. We'll still be better than Detroit. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Which so is the much. Packers are still the favorites. In the NFC They're the favorites. I think Minnesota wins the division this year because who the hell is Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball to? <laughs> who is he throwing the – name one player he's throwing the ball to. You well, can't because he doesn't have any. We gotta be taking the receiver. And interesting, you bring that up because the Packers draft right before the Cardinals. Green Bay had 22, the Cardinals had 23, and both of these teams are hungry for a receiver in the first round. Uh, back to Schrager's mock draft, the Packers are taking Traylon Burks, a uh, wide receiver out of Arkansas, and then okay. he has Jahan Dotson out of Penn State getting selected by the Cardinals at number 23 overall. Well, you know, the issue with this year's draft is because there's no quarterbacks, other positions are overrated. And one of those other positions are the wide receiver position. I mean, again, I saw Traylon Burks play a lot of Arkansas. Believe it or not, I'm a big SEC football fan. If I watch yeah. any football in college, it's always SEC first, Big Ten second. Sorry, it just matters more. <laughs> um, yes, but at the end of the day, Traylon Burks ran a 4 5 5 40, okay? And he's not Devontae Adams. And mm -hmm. so he's going to be your first round pick. And the Packers have not taken a receiver in the first round of the Aaron Rodgers era, as we all know. The earliest pick was Devontae yeah. Adams at receiver. Mm -hmm. Historically, so now you're guessing that they're going to hit on a receiver in their first time picking them in the first round. Aaron Rodgers is going to struggle this year. Believe it or not, I, I could see him quitting on the team halfway through after their four and four and basically saying, That's train me a contender hey, or I'm retiring. He's a, he's a yeah. diva queen, bro. That's true. Yeah, he but, is. I mean, but, I mean, even just talking about him, he, was, he lost all his weapons besides the backfield. I mean, they still have Aaron Jones, obviously, but then he lost Valdez Scanling. And who's going to be their number one? Lazard? Like, yeah, I guess Alan Lazard. And again, he's not terrible at Iowa State, but number one receiver. Yeah, he had like 36 catches last year. Didn't even, they haven't made any moves on the free agent market for a receiver. Either. I mean, it's because they paid what's his name a lot of money. They paid Aaron Rodgers so much damn money. And at the end of the day, they didn't have enough room to pay Devontae Adams. And I guess, guess what? I know Rodgers obviously makes a lot of his receivers better, okay? But Devontae Adams is a special player. <laughs> And he's going to miss not having that guy to throw he's to. And I've, a, time. a generational again, second most, wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, after the Bears, I watched the Packers damn near as close to the Bears. Okay. And then the Cardinals are probably third in the amount of football teams I watch. And this team's going to struggle. And he's going to struggle not having to throw to Adams. And if you thought Roger's body language was bad as it is, imagine now he doesn't have his number one receiver. Worse, yeah, without Tay. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I do like the Minnesota Vikings. There's a lot of games. They played in so many close games last season. And, of course, with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, everybody coming back strong and healthy. The Vikings are definitely a dark horse in the NFC. And I got to mention my Titans, of course, on the AFC side. Um, still the AFC South favorites, as far as I know. And as they they're drafting be. number 26. Um, I definitely see them going defense, but uh, back to Schrager's draft, how I'm taking Nakobe Dean, a linebacker out of Georgia. Love but, it. I uh, definitely think that the Titans will go defense in the first round. Yeah, I mean, again, as you know, I've been a big Titans fan ever since they had Vrabel come over as their head coach. I think he's an outstanding head coach. And they've, you know, they knocked off Brady in the Pats and basically ended the Patriots Brady era, you know, a couple of years back. And I think their biggest issue, Tennessee, is being able to control the lines of scrimmage and then making sure that you don't have to put too much 
um, stuff on Tannehill's back. Okay. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, obviously Henry was injured a lot last year and they still were the number one seed in the AFC. Imagine that your best player is injured all yeah. year and you're still the number one seed in the they, AFC. They, did, they had a, uh, some exceptional performances out of, uh, with their backup running backs. So uh, the Deontay. Yeah. Foreman. The, yeah. Deontay Foreman from Texas and, you know, their defensive line played outstanding. They were getting sacks left and right from their interior defensive linemen, from their linebackers. Um, but Dupree was awesome last mm -hmm. year. And, you know, I love this Tennessee Titan team still. I think they're still the favorite to win the South. And I think honestly, though, next year is their last chance um, yeah. to really make a run at the Super Bowl because they're starting to get a little older. Yeah. In regards yeah, to their defense. Stat too, um, yeah. The I mean, luckily they – yeah, well, I mean, at least I will say this. I got Robert Woods from the Rams, which was outstanding. They got rid of Julio Jones, who was finished. Sorry, Julio, you can't not catch a touchdown in two years and still be considered good. Yeah. You can't. You were, I mean, you were he great. Bummed way, he bummed his way out of Atlanta, out of the He's ACL. He's a bum now. He's a bum. No. wasn't the bum. His career is not a bum. He can't stay He's a bum he now. He's got to deal this down the field, but – anyways uh i real quick uh before we let you go um who who do you have winning it all in the nfl gotta wait and see there's still a lot of time there if i'm going based off this long off season um i'll say the bills right now but again we got to see what happens in the draft we got to wait for injuries in the preseason because yep. you know that always happens um still and, a lot to come, that's for sure yep well, Austin, we appreciate you coming on this week's edition of The Schmidt Show. Austin Grad, you can follow him on Twitter at AustGrad, as you can see below. And uh, NBC social media coordinator and lead, we appreciate you coming on the show this week, Austin. Thanks for having me, Schmitty. What a stellar opening week for Major League Baseball, huh? After all the drama of the lockout, both sides finally figuring things out. The league is back to its regularly scheduled program, thankfully. Now, I told y'all we would have a lot of talk about the hometown team, the Arizona Diamondbacks. Opening day, Seth Beer with the walk-off home run. And on National Beer Day, you couldn't have scripted it any better. And the D-backs start the season 1-0. You definitely know a few brews were pounded in celebration. But after the fireworks start, the D-backs offense has really struggled out of the gate. The team finally getting its second win of the season on Thursday. And it was another walk-off win. Seth Beer had his fingerprints all over it. Tying the game up at 2 in the bottom of the 10th. And then Cattell Marte, of course, getting his new contract just before the start of the season with the sacrifice fly to get Beer across home plate and the D-backs get their second win of the season. No team remaining undefeated in the MOB after the first week. I think this shows that we are in for a very competitive season ahead. This season, your boy Schmitty is trying fantasy baseball for the first time ever a 10 team league with some of my buddies from college. Ended up with the ninth pick in the draft, but I think I put together a nice little squad that could be sneaky. ESPN Fantasy giving me the highest chance to make the playoffs going in. I'm taking it with a grain of salt in my first season. It's going to be a lot of fun and we'll keep you updated on the team right here on the Schmidt Show. The 2022 WNBA Draft was on Monday, consisting of three rounds. The Atlanta Dream selecting Ryan Howard out of Kentucky with the number one overall pick. The Dream getting that number one overall pick after trading with the Washington Mystics less than a week before the draft. The defending champs, the Chicago Sky, had no picks in the draft whatsoever. Now the Indiana Fever had four of the 12 first round picks Unbelievable, the fever getting a whole lot better through the draft. Longtime ESPNW journalist Michelle Vopel gave the fever, dream, mystics, and Los Angeles Sparks A's in her draft grade report. The hometown team, the Phoenix Mercury, had two picks, taking Maya Dotson, power forward out of Notre Dame, and center Macy Williams out of IUPUI. That will wrap up this week's edition of the Schmidt Show. We'll continue to have more content outside of sports in the coming episodes. Just a loaded week of sports talk. April, arguably the biggest month 
of the year for sports. I'm finally back to producing music videos and working on some music of my own. I'll be excited to share that with you all very soon, working hard to spark some of the initiatives that I mentioned in last week's episode that are so important to me. We're going nowhere but up. I made a promise that we will improve every week and that is exactly what we will do. More guests coming in the future. Of course, remember to like, subscribe, and share. It means the world to me. And I can't thank y'all enough for the support already. The Schmidt Show is taking off. And thanks for tagging along this journey. Your host and creator, Ethan Schmidt, signing off. We'll see you next time.